Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. It technically, it doesn't matter how many times you say it. You can say it two times, three times, four times, five times, like Candyman, and it's not going to help this movie. So we'll get into it next on That Guy Talks Movies. <laughs> Welcome to That Guy Talks Movies. I'm That Guy Talking Movies. And on this episode, we're going to talk about the latest Tim Burton film, the follow-up to the 1988 classic, Beetlejuice. Only one, you only need to say it once, and it was perfect. And this is the follow-up to that. And when I saw the trailer for this in the theater, I, like I was taken by surprise when I saw a trailer for this because I had heard no news about it. I didn't read anything. It must have just totally been off of my radar. So I was watching something else and this popped up and I was pleasantly, I was actually excited because to see Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice again on screen and to see that they were making a second one, my first thought was excitement. But then I slowly settled into the idea that no matter how great a thriller sort of conjures up those, those, those thoughts of nostalgia and you start to feel good about that uh those experiences with that film over the years as many times as i've seen it the other part of me kicked in that realized okay <laughs> it, it's a follow-up to a film from from 1988 and they're going to make a mess of it and i'm going to be disappointed but all that said i went in somewhat optimistically so but let's get into it but before we do that if you're new to the channel you found me somehow and the algorithm worked and i did everything the right way and you are here watching this video and you've not yet subscribed to me and you want to hear somebody talk about movies every now and then to talk about streaming content and collecting movies and what i think about all that go ahead and hit that red subscribe button is it red on the actual channel i don't know it's red on my screen you hit subscribe and uh, to the people who already subscribed to me and you watch my videos regularly and you stick with me even through my absences, I truly appreciate you. Let's get into it. All right. So Tim Burton decides to do Beetlejuice 2. I wonder whose idea it is always. That's a part of this whole thing. You always want to know who's responsible. Was it the director saying, you know, saying, hmm, I'd like to revisit that. You know, like did Ridley Scott do that when it came to Gladiator 2? Is it the writers? Is it someone else? Is Michael Keaton? Hey, I feel like doing it again. <clears throat> Let's do it. Was it Winona Ryder going, I'd really like to work? Who, who was it? It wasn't Catherine O'Hare, I can tell you that. All right? I feel like they had to drag her into this. Anyway, this, this one, <laughs> spe speaking of the cast, let's get, let's get into the cast, right? So you've got Michael Keaton, who is the whole movie. Jenna Ortega does a decent job. I mean, it's Jenna Ortega. It is what it is. In, in spite of her character being written so trite, whatever. Winona Ryder's back, Justin Thoreau, horrible. Uh, Catherine O'Hara, always brilliant on screen, no matter what she's doing. Uh, William Defoe and Monica Bellucci, who, again, I could watch her on screen doing nothing and I'd be satisfied. Um, but here's the thing. They got rid of Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis. Now, they should have somehow signed up. Maybe it was Alec, maybe it was Gina, maybe it was the two of them collectively as a unit saying there's no way in hell we'll do a Beetlejuice 2. So they stayed out of it. I have to wonder, though, if they were even thought of. I'm assuming they were, right? And then the other guy, the father, Jeffrey Jones, who has actually in years suffered a whole lot of allegations and I think some convictions on child pornography or some really like, he's like in sexual predator, sexual deviant category now, like registered sex offender, apparently. This is, this is the last I've known. And he hasn't worked in a while. This is, you know, Mr. Rooney from Ferris Bueller's Day Off and the father from Beetlejuice, Charles Dietz. And they had to, I was wondering how they're going to write him out. And sure enough, they wrote him out. It's not done in a really pleasing way. I, I, I don't want to give spoilers. I don't want to say a lot. I'm just going to tell you that it doesn't work. I think it's just really sticky like it's just kind of whatever. And the original cast is really the the organic humor, the way that whole thing worked even though you're dealing in the afterlife and all the silliness and the the prosthetic you know the different the 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 uh, horror mask and all the stuff and the afterworld and the different characters in that world. It was so endearing and just so beautiful. It, beautifully executed by Burton and that fantasy and that world, you never really felt like it was getting out of hand or, okay, it's getting kind of silly now. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice 2, it gets out of hand. There's just too much. You know, Willem Dafoe is in this, and Willem Dafoe, who is another one of those actors, no matter what he does, I'm going to watch Willem Dafoe and I'm going to love him. It doesn't matter what you do with him. Not This is the first movie I can say, nope, 
Couldn't stand him in this movie. It was just, I, I almost felt his pain having to go through this film. And then Monica Bellucci, who is a guy, how old is this woman? Because she still rivals and probably takes out every single screen, you know, every female or supposed like hot chick in Hollywood right now. Put Monica Bellucci and those girls are done. 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 I don't know how old she is, but that's what Monica, but even her in this film was a total waste. Total waste. Justin Throw is in this film. Garbage. Horrible. Distracting. Really bad. God awful bad, actually. Bad writing, bad delivery, bad look. The whole nine. Just bad. Catherine O'Hara, as usual, is Catherine O'Hara. I just have nothing ever to say bad about her. Period. She could have a terrible performance and I'd be like, she was fantastic. It doesn't make a difference. Winona Ryder is Winona Ryder. Whatever. Like, it's just blah. It is what it is. It's flatline. It, it is what it is. I was a little surprised that Lydia Dietz hadn't really grown up in the whole goth phase. I listened to The Cure and Depeche Mode and I'm miserable and depressed. Uh, and I'm not knocking that because I still listen to The Cure and Depeche Mode. But And I went through that phase, uh, a much heavier phase at the time. But I just figured she, you know, she's a mother now. She'd be grown up. She'd get rid of the goth look. But apparently they carried that through into her adult life. So I, I don't get that. Um, I'm, I'm trying to give my thoughts here. I'm trying to get into what, what I, I just feel like it's one of those cases where you're going to try to touch something that's so original, so well done, so classic, so perfect on every level, like back to the future. I don't want to ever, 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 ever have them. I just watched it you know, this past weekend with my kids. Every single time we play it, we're all pretty much just like zoned in on it because it's it's impossible not to watch over and over again and still feel the same way each time, if not better each time. It doesn't change. If you tried to do Back to the Future again or do a follow-up to it, let's say part four, it would be horrible. I mean, they lost it after the second one, as far as I'm concerned. The first one's classic, second one is eh, the third one was psh. So if you tried to go back and do Back to the Future now, you'd just, it would be a mess. This is another case where you took a franchise, you took an incredible character, an iconic character like like Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton is the savior to this movie. If there's any reason to watch this movie, it's just to go see Michael Keaton back doing his thing as the juice. That's the only reason to watch this film. It's like if you just cut out all of Michael uh, Keaton's pieces and make like a little TikTok reel or do something like that, that would be the only thing worth watching. Otherwise, the rest of this doesn't work. It is a mess as far as the storyline goes, uh, as far as how they deal with certain situations, a particular uh, absence of certain characters, the way they explain it away, bad, really poorly done. The, um, the, the world building and the way they've done the whole dead thing, again, it matches pretty much what the 1988 film did, so nothing really to say there. I just think it's really over the top and gets a little obnoxiously silly at some point. There's a really offensive, obnoxious part regarding Soul Train that I just totally cringed at. I, I don't know if anyone else will feel the same way, but I just felt like, really, that's what you did there? So, shout out, whatever, Don Cornelius. Uh, it just... It just doesn't work, right? It's it's long, it's it's convoluted, it's a mess, it has its pieces, it's got its moments of laughter, but that's only through Michael Keaton, that's really it. This is a film, when I got home, I told my 11-year-old, I summed it up, I said, this is a film where if, you, if we watch Beetlejuice as a family, like on a Friday night or something, and then Saturday afternoon we decide to watch Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, because it's streaming on max or whatever it is, it'll be fine. You'll get laughs out of it, you'll enjoy it. This was not a movie to go see in a movie theater. That much I can tell you. That's the only thing that bothered me, that I went to a theater. If I saw this and I was just home and it was like, blah, okay, whatever, I can get over it. Anyway, that's my take on Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, I've spoken probably enough about it. Again, I didn't want to give any spoilers, so I'm not going to get into the whole storyline and what happens and who goes where. It's not important. You're dealing with the dead and the living and the living and the dead and them coming together and working together and not working together and doing whatever they're doing. And Michael Keaton is Michael Keaton. So... If you see it and you go to the theater, let me know. Come back to this page. Go ahead in uh, in the comments. Let me know what you thought about the film. If you're going to go see it this weekend, go ahead. You know, go see it. Either way, come back. If you think I'm totally crazy and just you thought it was brilliant and deserved four Oscars, let me know in the comments. I can take it. All right. If you like this video, hit the like button. I truly appreciate that when you do that. And subscribe if you are not subscribed. And I will see you on the next That Guy Talks movies. That Guy Talks movies. Twice. I said it twice. Just, you know, for the... Peace. We're out. <laughs> <laughs>